The Cube presents HPE Discover 2022. Brought to you by HPE. Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's day one coverage of HPE Discover 22, live from Las Vegas. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. We have a couple of guests from Red Hat. You may have seen some news yesterday. We're going to be talking about that. Please welcome Ryan King, the Senior Director of Hardware Partner Ecosystem. And Lori Fontaine joins us as well, the Senior Director of Global Commercial Partner Ecosystem. Welcome to the program, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. So great to be back in person. I know Red Hat Summit was just last month or so. That's right. Ryan, talk about hybrid cloud. It's all the buzz. We've been talking a lot about it in the last hour and a half alone. What are some of the trends that, that Red Hat is seeing with respect to hybrid cloud? Well, I, I mean, hybrid cloud at Red Hat has been a trend for quite some time. In fact, uh, we were very early in setting our course towards hybrid cloud with our products and platforms. Um, and that's been a key part of our strategy in terms of the number of transformations that have been happening in the enterprise and with HPE. Um, we're super excited about, you know, we're hitting our stride with OpenShift. I've been working with OpenShift for the better part of my 10 years here, 12 years at Red Hat, 10 years with OpenShift. And we're very excited about seeing the pattern of going where customers want to build their cloud. Um, it's very important that we're where the market is going. So we're seeing um, trends from uh, the public cloud now go into edge and telco and 5G and really exceed, see them expanding their um, infrastructure footprint out to those use cases. And again, we see RHEL everywhere. So RHEL is continuing to expand as well. And then um, Ansible Automation Platform has also been a great means of kind of bringing together community for that last mile of automating your entire infrastructure. Well, the, lin the functionality of Linux continues to improve. OpenShift is everywhere. We, I mean, I remember at the Red Hat Summit, I mean, well, we, we, we coined this term super cloud. <laughs> which is this layer that floats you know, on-prem to across clouds, out to the edge. We had Verizon on, they were talking about you know, 5G developers and how they're developing using you know, a combination of, of, of OpenShift. So you guys have been really crushing it with, uh, with OpenShift. I remember, gosh, I mean, we've been covering you know, Red Hat Summits for a long time now, and just to see that evolution is actually quite amazing. Yeah, it's actually really neat to see our CEOs align too, right? So the messaging that we've had around, around hybrid cloud from Red Hat, like you said, we were kind of the pioneers, honestly. This, we've been talking about hybrid cloud from the very beginning. We always knew that it wasn't going to be public cloud or private cloud, it was, we had to have you know, hybrid. And, and it's interesting to see that Antonio you know, took that on and wanted to say, we're going to do everything as a service, right, a few years ago. And, and the whole theme was around hybrid cloud and giving customers that choice, right? So it's exciting for us to see all of that come together. And I actually worked for HP for like 17 and a half years. So it's really fun for me to be on this side now with Red Hat and see the messaging come together, the vision come together, and just really being able to align and move forward on Tremendous this. Tremendous amount of transformation in the last few years alone. Oh my but gosh. You talk about, you know, customers need choice, they want choice. But you also talked about, we have to meet customers where they are, that seems the last few years to have accelerated. There is no more option for companies. You've got to meet the customers where they are. Exactly, yeah, and it's all about choice, like you said. And it, everybody's got the, you know, their own way to do everything as far as consumption goes, and we have to be available and spot on with it. You know, and be able to move quickly with these trends that we're seeing, and so it's great to be aligned. And from a partnership standpoint, I mean, you, you mentioned H, HP at 17 years. I mean, it was, it was a hard to follow company. You had. Oh. You had PCs over here, you had services, the kind of the old EDS business. Now there's such a focus Absolutely. on this mission of as a service, and you know, obviously a key part of that is having optionality and bringing open source tooling into that. I mean, we heard about this in, in spades at, at Red Hat Summit, which was really interesting this year. It was a smaller VIP event in Boston, and I, and I loved it you know, because it was really manageable. We had all the execs on and customers and partners. It was awesome. What's new since Red Hat Summit? Well, I mean, I, th I would say that um, obviously GreenLake and what we've announced this week is a big new thing for us. Um, but really, like, we're just continuing on our pattern. We are now, uh, if you look at the Q1 report from IBM, you'll see that the growth of the customer base for OpenShift that they reported just continues to go up and to the right. You'll see that now, like Omdia is saying that we're like 47.8% of the containers market for the enterprise. You'll see that like we're now in 65% of the Fortune 500 with OpenShift, 90% with Red Hat in general. So we've established our footprint, and when you establish your footprint and customers start taking you out to the edge, we're going into these 5G use cases. We're, we've got an incredible amount happening in the AI space. All these emerging areas of where people are building their cloud, like we're now going to that next level of saying, how do they want to consume it? 
So what's really important to me about that is, is so Omnia data, around 50% of the market is, is OpenShift. A, a, people may not realize, a lot of people use, you know, do Kubernetes for free. You know, hey, we're doing Kubernetes. But they don't have that application development framework and all the recovery and all the, the tooling around it. And the reason why I think that's so important, Lori, is ecosystems want to monetize. So Absolutely. if people are paying for things, that becomes more interesting and it actually starts to attract people, just naturally. Yeah. Absolutely, um, and speaking of ecosystem, I mean, that's the beauty of what we're doing with GreenLake too. We're taking on a building block approach, so we're really, it's kind of ISV as a service, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, you know, personally, I, this was my baby for the past couple of years, trying to make sure that we took into consideration every partner use case, every customer use case, so we created an agreement that would make sense uh, to be able to scale, but also to meet all the demands of our customers. Um, and so, the, the, what's really exciting about this is now we have a chance to, take this building block approach, scale it out to all types of partner types, right, throughout the entire ecosystem, and build offerings together. And that is really exciting for us. And that's where we see the real potential here with GreenLake and with Red Hat. What's actually available inside of GreenLake? So uh, we are starting with OpenShift. So OpenShift will be available in Q3. Um, that will follow in Q4 with RHEL and then after that Ansible. So we're, we're moving very quickly to bring our platforms into it. And it's really our strategic platforms, but it's all based on customer demand. We know we're seeing amazing transformation of customers moving to Kubernetes, you said. You know, OpenShift is Kubernetes with useful additions to it and an ecosystem around it, right? So that transformation is also happening at the bare metal layer. So we're seeing people move into Kubernetes bare metal, which is an amazing growth market for us. Explain those useful additions, if you would. So why shouldn't I just go out and and, and get the free version of Kubernetes. Why should I engage uh, Red Hat and, and OpenShift? What do I get? So uh, you get all of the day two management stuff. You get, uh, we have a whole set of additional stuff you can purchase around it, uh, OpenShift Platform Plus. You can get our ACM, our advanced cluster management. So you want to manage multiple clusters, right? You get the ACS, the security side of it. Um, you can also get ODF, so you get storage built into it as well. And we've done all these integrations, so you can manage the whole thing as a cluster or as multiple clusters uh, with the whole enterprise support and the long-term support that we provide for these things up to 10 years. So when you look at the early days, Lisa, of, of Kubernetes, it was really the focus was on simplicity. You had other platforms that were actually doing more sophisticated cluster management and the, the committers at, in Kubernetes said, you know, we're not going to do that, we're going to keep it simple. And so that leaves some holes and gaps. And you know, they're starting to fill those, but what, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but what Red Hat has done is said, okay, we're going to accelerate you know, the, the, the closing of those gaps and stay ahead and actually offer incremental value, and that's why you're winning in the marketplace. Well, we're an open company, so we're still yeah. doing everything upstream and open source as we do. Of course. Sticking with you know, the APIs and ABIs to make this all work, both you know, in terms of what the community's trying to drive, what we're trying to drive for our customers on their behalf, and then just where things are going from a technology basis. We make it a lot of investment. But you have to, you have to make a, Red Hat has to make a choice as to where it puts its commitments. You can't spread yourself too thin, so you got to pick your spots. And, You've, you've proven that you're pretty adept at doing that. That just comes back to customer centricity, right? And just knowing where our customers need to take the platform. Um, it, that's but, easy to say, but it's, it's an art form and well, a little bit of science. Remember, the, these customers have experts that are deep in this space. So it's like, you know, those experts trust us with where they needed to go and they trust us to help shepherd that and deliver that as a platform to them. So it's not like anybody, tell us what you want, right? Like it's really <laughs> about like knowing what's the best way to do it, and working with the people that can help you understand how to apply that to their use case. And within the customer environment, who are you working with? Who is that key constituent or constituents that are guiding Red Hat in this direction? Well, it's certainly infrastructure folks, so it's your, it's your standard folks that are looking at the, how do we lay down our infrastructure, how do we manage it, how do we grow it? Uh, it goes out to the application developers who are mm -hmm. trying to deliver this in a cloud native way. And we have new personas you know, coming in with the AI practitioners, right? So um, we announced uh, at, before Summit at um, uh, NVIDIA's event, uh, their new uh, offering called um, NVIDIA uh, AI Enterprise. And so that's them bringing in enterprise support for GPUs, for CUDA, and for a software stack above that um, to start offering some more support there. So they're certifying OpenShift, we're both certifying the servers that run underneath it, and then they're offering support for their stuff on top of it. And that's a whole new use case for us. And you know, I should also mention that even though this uh, paper use with the GreenLake is new for us, and we just had this big announcement, we have done GreenLake deals though. We've done numerous GreenLake deals. 
uh, with our annual subs, right? So, uh, I, it, it, so even though this is new to us as far as you know, monthly utilization and being able to do this cloud consumption, this isn't new to us as co two companies coming together. We've been doing GreenLake deals for the past couple of years. It's just now we have this cloud consumption uh, availability, which is really going to make this thing launch, so. So what have been some of the customer benefits so far? You've been doing it for a couple of years. The announcement was yesterday, but there's obviously feet on the street going on. What are some of the, the big outcomes that you're seeing customers actually bring to reality? I think speed and agility, right? That's the biggest thing with, with our products. Being able to have it, everything predictable and being able to have it consumed one way. Um, instead of having this fragmented customer experience, which is you know, what we've seen in the past. So I think that's the biggest thing is speed, agility, and just you know, a really good customer experience at this point. Well, Has, I, oh, go ahead, please. I was gonna say the customer experience is critical. Yes. That's one of the things that we know that in terms of, of patients wearing thin the last couple of years, people expect to have a really strong consumer experience regardless of what you're doing, regardless of what industry, and so yeah. attention and mind on that is a differentiator in my opinion. Absolutely, yeah, and we've got to constantly keep our eye on that. I mean, that's, that's our North Star, if you will, right, so. And Lori, I, I know you're saying you're, you've done Green Lake deals in the past, but it feels different to me now in that it's actually coalescing some of the things that Fidel Maruso announced this morning, the platform on, on which, you know, ISV is a service, I think you, you call yeah. it. You, yeah. it. It now seems like, you know, look, a couple years ago, HP said, okay, this is the direction that we're going. They weren't there at that time, and they're still not there. There's a lot of work to be, to be done, but now it's starting to form. You're seeing you know, the pieces come together, the puzzle pieces, that sort of substrate being laid out, and now you're hoping that we see the steep part of the S-curve, and that's what customers, I think, are expecting. Right, and it's bringing that operating model to move to a monthly model so they can do pay-as-you-go, right? And that pairs up nicely with like, the cloud-native capabilities we're bringing to OpenShift and hybrid cloud in general. So it's... Uh, it just shows, like, we're already getting demand from customers that's saying, like, this is part of our model. Like, we know a certain amount of infrastructure we want to own, and we just want to own it outright, but there's a lot that they want to have flexibility on. And so being able to add that portion to it is just, you know, going to help us both. And you think about the critical aspects of, of the cloud operating model. It's obviously pay as you go. It's, you know, massive scale. It's ecosystem enablement. And also automation. I mean, that is, that is a key. What's your point of view on that? You guys, with Ansible, you're, you're, you know, you go back to a couple years ago, and it was, you know, there was this. There were a lot of other tooling, but now, I mean, Ansible has really taken off. Um, yeah, it's and, just, you know, Cinderella story, right? Like, it really this is amazing <laughs> um, community-driven thing where we just knew. And we all know this, right? You have when you get to the very last mile of doing infrastructure management. There's a variety of devices. There's a variety, a variety of vendors. And then you have like the variety of skills of the people that have to figure out how to do automate all of this. And what Ansible did is it provided a common language across all of that. And so what we do with automation, our Ansible automation platform is we make it so now teams can manage all of this together and they can share their playbooks and they can host that privately for all their enterprise stuff that they need to do. So it's just, you know, it fits our DNA so well to have something so community driven now with a really nice enterprise message wrapped around it. And it's playing out very well for where, you know, hybrid cloud, right? Because there's some more additional variety you need to be able to manage, um, you know, across all of your different footprints. Because really it's like, it's not just about flexibility and scale up, scale down. It's where do you need it to run at what time, right? And that, that last leg, Ansible plays a key role in that. And we actually, Ansible will be coming further down, the, you know, the patch. I know we're going to talk a little bit about what's available today versus what's available uh, down the road. But yeah, we have that on the radar. So right out of the gate, we're working on OpenShift, obviously, um, bare metal. And uh, we see that happening in Q3. And then behind that is RHEL in Q4. And then Ansible is going to be right behind that. So that's kind of the order that, and there's other pieces, right? So our whole portfolio is basically available to HP right now. It's just making sure that we can operationalize everything and have the best experience. It's all inside of GreenLake. All inside of GreenLake, yeah. yeah. Pretty neat. Lori, question for you. You've been, you were with HP for a very long time. This yeah. is obviously the first Discover in three years in person. Exactly. You know, three years ago, Antonio Neri stood on stage and said, we are going to by 2022, and here we are, deliver everything as a service. As a partner and as a former HP, -er, what are you seeing at this Discover 22? It's, it's so interesting. I, it's such a sea change, if you will, right? Um, and having come from HPE, I actually led the software as a service organization for a while on the software side of things. And we thought that was like state of the art and cutting edge. That was 10, 11, 12 years ago, right? Um, so to actually see this come to life 
Because we were all thinking, really, everything is a service? How are you going to do that? Like your entire portfolio is going to be available? Like that is lofty, right? And having worked at HP, I thought, wow, I don't, you know, I know things take time. <laughs> and, um, but actually, just even being around the showcase here and watching everything come to life is amazing. Because I, I, you know, I, I was very positive about it, but at the same time, it's like that, that was a big goal. Three years, right? And it's, I'm seeing it happen. A big so. goal and two of those years during a pandemic. Right. So right? talk about lofty. Oh yeah. my and, gosh. And quite a bit of accomplishments. Guys, thank you so much for joining Dave thank and me you. on the program talking about Thanks, guys. what great. Red Hat and HP are doing, your power, partnership, powership, is that a word? It is now. <laughs> your powership. Powership, I like that. <laughs> with GreenLeg. We appreciate that. We'll look forward to having you guys right. back on. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. All right. For our guests, I'm Lisa Martin, he's Dave Vellante. We are at HPE Discover 22, live from the show floor in Las Vegas. This is just day one of our coverage. Stick around, we'll be right back with our next guest.